Hey guys, I hope you all are doing fine. In this video, I will be giving you a walkthrough of the project I recently worked on. I will not be writing any code, but I will go through different functionality I implemented so that you can use it in your own projects if needed. I will add the link to my GitHub repo in the description. So let's get started. Yes, it's a food delivery application and this is how the homepage looks like. I found this incredible design on freepick.com to which I will add the link in the description. Scrolling down, we can see that, that there's a search bar where you can enter your address and the application will filter the restaurants as per the address added. Now, one thing you might be wondering that how I am getting all the recommendations as and when I start typing. And the answer to this is Google's Places API. So let's head over to the documentation of Google's Places API. As we can see that the Places API is a service that returns the information about places using HTTP requests, which is pretty obvious. Now scrolling down, we can see that there are a number of different place requests which are available. And the one we are currently using is Place Autocomplete. The Place Autocomplete API fills in the name or addresses of a place as the user types. Now heading to the section of Place Autocomplete, we can see that we are in the Place Autocomplete section and this is the response the this particular API returns when a user selects a particular address. The It returns a bunch of different information but the only thing we are interested in is the place ID. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to take this place ID and use this place details API which returns the more detailed information about a specific place. Now heading to the place details section we can see that we are in the place details section and the place details API takes in a place ID as a para parameter which we acquire from the place autocomplete API. Now when you query this place details API it, it, returns, us a, it returns us a bunch of different information among which the thing we are the only thing we are interested in is this location object which gives us the latitude and the longitude of that particular location. Now using this latitude and longitude we filter out the restaurants in the radius of 10 kilometers which is like 6 miles. Now there is a node package available called React Places Autocomplete which helps you to easily implement all the APIs I just went through. Enough talking, let's see it in action. These are the restaurants registered with the platform in the selected area which is Miramahindo. Now let's see what will happen if I choose some other location. Now these are the restaurants which are registered in the selected location uh, which is Oshiwara. Now what, let's see what will happen if I select a location where there are no restaurants registered with the platform. We can see that we get a message that no restaurants currently available in your area. Come back later. Now let's head to the first location, first address which is now you can slide through different images which are available which are uploaded by the restaurants. Also there is this green button available over here on which if you click the browser will prompt you to allow the location, allow this website to access a location and if you click on allow it will automatically detect your address and will automatically detect your address and will fetch you the nearby restaurants. Now let us see what will happen if, if we select a single restaurant. So when we select a single restaurant we have some few more information about the restaurant for example the address and the contact number and here on the right we can see the same image slider. When we scroll down we can see all the different items which are uploaded by the seller uh, which we can order. Now there is also a small search bar over here which filters the items in real time so that it saves your time without having any page refreshes. Now when I click on add to cart, I will be redirected to the login page as I am not authenticated. Now let us create a new user by going to the sign up page. Now I will fill out the, all the information over here and yes it is validated. We can see that it does not accept any empty information. You can see that if the two passwords do not match, it will prompt us that the passwords have to match. And it will also send a verification link to verify your account on the entered email address. 
Now when I click on sign up and if the sign up is successful, the, the user is redirected to the login page and we can see a message that account registered successfully. Please verify your email before logging in. Now if I try to access the platform without verifying my email, uh, I will get a message here saying that please verify your email before accessing the platform. So let's go ahead and verify our email. We can see that we have a new email with the subject of verify our account on food up and we can click on the link here to verify our account. Now on clicking we get a message that the account is verified successfully and 3002 is the port number where my backend server is running. Now if I try to log in uh, let's let's log in with the wrong credentials. So I get a message that the it's the email and password combination is invalid. Now let, let me log in using the right credential. Now when I log in using the right credential, uh, we can see the name of the user is displayed here and instead of having the login and register button, we have orders, cart and logout button. In the orders page, we can see that there are no orders present currently and in the cart page, we can see that the grand total is zero and the proceed to checkout button is disabled as there are no items present in the cart. Now let's go ahead and add some items in our cart. Let me go to this particular restaurant and try adding sandwich to my cart. We can see we get a small snack bar at the bottom saying that the item added to cart. Now let me also add the burger in my cart and head back to my cart page. Now when I go back to my cart page, we can see that both the items are successfully added and also I can increase the quantity and decrease the quantity. Now when I decrease the quantity to zero, we see that the item goes away and when I delete and my and also when I delete the item, it also goes away. Now let me go back and add again. Let, let me add from let's say Pizza Express. We can see it's loading and there are four different pizzas, uh, three different pizzas and one lava cake available. So let me add paneer pizza to my cart and go back to my cart and increase the quantity to two. And before placing the order, I also want to show you the seller section. So uh, let me pause my video over here and let me head back to the seller section. At the bottom of the application in the photo, we can see that there's a section where you can register your restaurant with the food hub, that is food hub for business. So, so let's see what we have there. Now when I click on get started, we see that there's a page where you can add a restaurant. You There are a couple of different informations required before you add a restaurant. For example, you can upload images, there's an address tab and there's minimum order amount and so on. Uh, the only verification I'm doing currently is the email verification. Of course, in real world, it will not be enough. You will have to manually verify the restaurant or verify it against some kind of government identification. Now, I'm not going to enter each and every detail over here because it's a normal sign up process with email verification and normal images upload and so on. But the one thing I would like to uh, bring to the notice here is that the address tab. Now what I'm using here is the Google's geocoding API to take the address entered by the restaurant and convert it to latitude and longitude using the Google Geo geocoding API. We can see that the geocoding is a process of converting address into a geographic coordinate like latitude and longitude. Now when the restaurant enters their address, any restaurant enter their address, it uses in the, in the back end uh, the application uses the geocoding API and converts the address into latitude and longitude which is stored in the database along with the address. Now this latitude and longitude is later used to filter the restaurants in the home page for, uh, for user based on the location. Now let me log in as a seller. Now, when I log in as a seller, we can see that instead of getting redirected to the home page, we get redirected to the seller page. Now, the, the, the top half of the application is same. We can see the information of the restaurant. But when you scroll down, we can see that instead of adding the item to cart, we have the option to edit the item, to delete the item and to add a new item. Now, let us say, now let's say I edit the price of this Oreo milkshake from 160 to 180. Submit. 
the changes get reflected and when i go now let me also log in as a customer in my incognito tab now i am logged in using my jack danson account let me search when i go to this restaurant and i see the price of the oreo milkshake is changed changed from 180 160 to 180 now if i again change the price from 180 to 140 now let's see what happens we can see that the change is being made for the customers as well the price gets changed from 180 to 140 now let me delete the item the item gets deleted now when i refresh over here in the customer side also the item goes away we can see that we only have six items now now let me add an item so i have entered the information and also selected an image now let me submit and we can see that the item gets added now let me head over to my customer side and when i refresh the page we can see that over here also the item gets added now let me go ahead and add something to my cart and i have two items in my cart let me delete this and proceed to check out now let me fill out the delivery details i'll be back in a moment so i filled out my information and i'm about to place my order now when i place my order we can see that the order gets placed and i have the option to cancel my order and also to view my order summary now, now when i head over to my orders page in the seller's dashboard we can see that there's an order uh, created over here as well we can view the order summary and we can cancel or accept the order the user can cancel the order as long as the seller does not accept it once the seller accepts it the user will not be able to cancel the order so let's see it in action let's say the seller accepts the order then we can see that the cancel order button has been disabled now when the food let's say the food is ready the seller can click on out for delivery and we can see the status changes from uh, the order accepted to order out for delivery now when the order is completed the seller can click on order completed and the order status will change from order out for delivery to order completed so that's how the order process takes place now let us see what will happen if we place order from two different restaurants let's say salami sandwich from cup cafe ojo and and let me also select an item from pizza express now when i place my order from two different restaurants the both the order will be proceeded independently we can see that instead of one order being created there are two orders being created uh, which are from two different restaurants and both this order will be processed independently in the same manner as the previous order as the pre previous order was processed now you can also cancel the order if you cancel the order the uh, the seller will not be able to accept it let's see it in action if i cancel my cafe ojo order the we can see that you're in the seller as well the order gets cancelled now one thing you might have noticed is that we is that we do not refresh our page every time the order is cancelled or order order is placed or order is accepted now this is because i am using the concept of a web socket senior uh, where where the server can broadcast a message to the all the connected clients or specific clients based on certain actions which happen in the server that's it for this video i will see you in next one